Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. Good evening. Welcome to our uh, home communion service uh, we share together, each in our own places uh, at this time. Uh, if you uh, want to take part in the communion piece tonight, why well, make sure you have some bread and some uh, grape juice or wine uh, ready when we get to that in, in, in a few minutes. Um, let's begin with a prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Each week we have been uh, uh, looking uh, more at who this Jesus is, the host, and then also at who we are as the people who are receiving the meal, uh, the children of God, the, the family, uh, that uh, Jesus invites to gather around uh, for this meal. So I want to look some more tonight at who Jesus is and, and then what he calls us uh, to do. Uh, we'll look at some um, verses from uh, the book of 1 John in the, New, in the New Testament here. I'm going to read uh, a little bit from verse, uh, excuse me, chapter 2 in 1 John. If you recall, uh, uh, the author here, John, is one of the uh, apostles, so he spent lots of time with Jesus, interacted with him in some uh, very deep, profound uh, ways regarding uh, people and people's lives and, and truth and, and the relationships of knowing God. Uh, and now he's older in his life when he writes uh, this. And he is uh, trying to teach some people uh, in this letter about this Jesus who has now died and he rose uh, to heaven, but he's not here in the same way he was uh, at this point. So listen to his delicate heart and his love for Jesus as, as he tells about Jesus and Jesus' love. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin, but if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. What an introduction to Jesus. Wow. He really cares for his Lord. We know that we have not come to know him we know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what Jesus commands is a liar, and the truth is not in this person. But if anyone obeys Jesus' word, God's love is truly made complete in this person. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. There's a connection here with anybody who wishes to be one of God's family, one of Jesus' people. Uh, it says we must obey Jesus' commands, and then we must live and walk as Jesus did. So what's with the, the commands? Uh, for lots of us, a command is something that's kind of a roadblock because if you do this, then I'll love you. Then God will take care of you. But you better be worth it. You better live up to it. And that's what a command is. It tells us what we have to do if we're going to be able to be in God's good graces. Well, that's sort of right, a little bit. But there's a very different flavor to it. But these next uh, verses, I, I think, will give a, a really uh, neat sense to that uh, of commands and, and what that has to do with us. 
Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one. Oh, okay, so this isn't some new um, crazy thing that this Johnny Come Lately uh, came up with here. I'm not writing you a new command. John is kind of quoting Jesus here. But an old one, which you have had from the beginning, this old command is the message you have heard. So, an easy place to find if we go back to Leviticus is one of the places where it says, love your neighbor as yourself. And many times in the Old Testament, we come across this very important to God and therefore to the, the people, uh, the Israelites, uh, the Jewish people in the Old Testament. Hospitality is a huge thing to them. You must welcome people. And they didn't talk to themselves of, we must do this. It was, it's just built in. They knew that's where their heart was. And when you treat other people with respect, like they're important, not like they're less than you are, or you can look down on them or treat them badly, that doesn't get anybody anywhere. And so the, the Hebrew people were very much aware of treating people well, welcoming them in, giving them a place to stay and, and food to eat. That's how you treat people. So that's the old command that, uh, that John is talking about here, where Jesus said, um, that's one that I bring you, is I'm just refreshing in your mind how important it is that all people love each other and take care of each other, treat each other well. This old message, that's the message you've heard before. But then he goes on again to uh, say what Jesus said, yet, I am writing you a new command. Oh, okay, it is this old one, but, but it's also new. Its truth is seen in Jesus and now will be seen in you because the darkness is passing. We're seeing things more clearly now. And the true light is already shining. True light, that's Jesus. Something new. There's the old, the marvel of God's truth and love. But now it's going to come across in a new way. And then John goes on to remind the people of the sacrifice. And he's written about this before in the Gospel of John, uh, many different places. John 15, where he talks about sacrifice and servanthood. This is a new calling. This is not different from the old, and yet it is. It's, it's new, it's bigger than, it's more than. It's a love that only Jesus is able to bring. So there is something new here. This is sacrificial. One who is willing to give up his life for another. One who is willing to wash the feet of those who think themselves not worthy. Servanthood. This is a whole new level of love that Jesus brought. That's what John wants us to think about tonight and, and so I just leave you with that image of this is something else about Jesus. He didn't toss out the, the good stuff. No, he brings that along with him. He fulfills it. He makes it more real. But he does add something for as Savior of the world, the cross. This is an entirely additional level, level of love of taking care of others. And in this meal tonight, this is one of the places where that comes through to us. This is Old Testament love, taking care of your neighbor, respecting all people, and yet it's something more. I invite you to think about that, both pieces. God's love, we're used to hearing, the whole world has heard about, and something more something more that we will be part of tonight. Let's celebrate that meal. And the something more, the new commandment, the new level of God's love, when we confess our sins, 
God forgives us and gives us eternal life. So let's confess. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And then we are reassured. It is pronounced to us God's forgiveness. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace for eternity. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Thank you for tonight. God's blessings to you. Good night.